Hi, this is Corinne Mosier, and you're listening to The Three Gun Show with Dave Hartman. Welcome to The Three Gun Show, episode 49. I am your host, Dave Hartman. In this episode, Denise Johnson of Rocky Mountain 3-Gun is on to announce the opening of registration for the 2016 Rocky Mountain 3-Gun. Denise also tells us a history of Rocky Mountain 3-Gun, as well as the other matches that her and her husband JJ are running at the NRA Winnington Center in Raton. One quick announcement, the 3-Gun Show t-shirt, the first 3-Gun Show t-shirt, Born to 3-Gun, which was hand-drawn by listener, 3-Gunner, and talented artist Zach Weaver of Broken Key Apparel, is up for pre-sale at 3gunshow.com slash merch, M-E-R-C-H. Pre-sale is on through December 21st, and uh, due to the holidays, anticipated ship date will be January 11th, 2016. It's an amazing design, so if you're uh, if you're wanting to support the show and you're wanting to get yourself a t-shirt, check it out. Also, as a bonus, when you order a shirt during the pre-sale, you get a print of the original Born to 3-Gun artwork, to frame and hang in your gun your gun room. This is hand signed and numbered by the artist, which is awesome. Now on to the show. Denise and JJ have a lot going on at uh, at the NRA Whittington Center in Raton, including the Outlaw Three Gun Challenge, which is pretty cool. So you should definitely check that out. And uh, to make it simple, I just put all the links together for you in the show notes at threegunshow.com slash episode forty nine. Now please join me in welcome to the show, Denise Johnson. Denise, welcome to the Three Gun Show. Hi, happy to be here. Well, De- Denise is the match director of Rocky Mountain Three Gun and Johnson Three Gun, and I'm excited to have you on, Denise, because we've known each other for a couple of years, and uh, I know that you're a kick in the pants, and the audience is uh, going to get to listen to you as well, and we're going to have some fun here. Uh, r- you know, I I know this I say real quick a lot, so but don't take that as real quick. But real quick, tell me the. Uh, the like the brief history of Rocky Mountain Three Gun and exactly how you and Jake uh, JJ came to uh, get involved in it. Well, that's not real quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now on Enos, in fact, they're talking about it. There's a new uh, Three Gun match called Resurgence that's going to be at uh, JP's Blue Steel Ranch down here in New Mexico in Logan, and they're going to do the old SOF things. And I bring this up because Rocky Mountain Three Gun came out of Soldier of Fortune. Um, Soldier of Fortune was down there in Vegas most of the time. Um, the guys who put out the magazine from Boulder um, were running this three-gun match, the first real three-gun thing. It didn't have walkthroughs. They were pretty um, military law enforcement um, kind of matches. And they honestly got kind of tired of running them. And the Miller brothers, um, Eric and Kurt Miller, um, Blaine West and Jimmy Holdsworth and a couple other gangs from up here, guys from up here in Colorado, ran the last couple of Soldier of Fortune matches at the Whittington Center. And then um, Soldier, they ran it for Soldier of Fortune, and then Soldier of Fortune said, we're kind of done. We're, yeah. And so they started Rocky Mountain Three Gun. Um, they were running some local matches up at Aurora Gun Club under the name Rocky Mountain Three Gun, and they decided to call their big match Rocky Mountain Three Gun. And that started in 2003. Turns out that both JJ and I started shooting Three Gun in 2003. I'd been shooting USPSA um, pistol for a while, and a friend of mine said, you know, you have to come out and try three gun. And I'm like, ugh, I grew up in an anti-gun family. Getting a pistol in my hand was pretty amazing. <laughs> but uh, I went out to one match at Aurora, and I was hooked. I borrowed shotgun and a rifle, and <laughs> I was still using an HK, um, a little USP back then with a short barrel. And it was, it was I just thought three gun was the best. So it turns out that one of the founders of Rocky Mountain Three Gun, well, I taught him math in Boulder. Oh, no kidding. Um, (laughs) Yeah, the first time he saw me at the gun range, he walked in, he said, oh, my God, my name was Miss Pierman then. He said, Miss Pierman, did you shoot when you taught me? And I'm like, no. (laughs) Oh, good. (laughs) But um, that was Jimmy Holdsworth. And so he asked my friend and I to come out and RO a stage for the first Rocky Mountain Three Gun. So we did an all pistol stage because mostly Soldier Fortune did one one gun stages. They didn't mix up too much. Um, you carried your pistol on your case. You 
couldn't finish or your gun went down, you could finish up with pistol if you could. But um, in general, they were kind of one gun stages. So we did a pistol stage where you broke out of a tiger cage and you grabbed a crowbar and you beat these five clays to death because they were your captor's head. And then you picked up an AK, a real scenario based, and you shot a couple targets that were your bad guys. And then you ran over and picked up your pistol that they had been playing with, apparently. And luckily, they left it with a magazine. But anyway, um, and you <laughs> ran up and shot. And it was really a hoot. And I met JJ that year because he was RO in a different stage. And then the next year, I said I would come RO, but my friend didn't come with me. And Eric Miller, who was doing the the trying to figure out who was doing what and staffing, he's like, who am I supposed to put her with? Because in 2004, I think there were no more than 10 women shooting three-gun anywhere in the country. Um, it's not at all like it was. To, it is today. There were very few of us. We weren't RO, and um, I was just kind of a weird thing. But JJ said, oh, I'll take her. And so we ran another little pistol stage where you chained a briefcase to your arm and you know, it was the presidential football and you ran up and shot um, pistol. And then cool. uh, after that, uh, JJ and I kind of started dating <laughs> and um, uh, we did another stage together in 2005. And then we got married in um, at Las Vegas in USPSA Nationals in 05. We got married right before I won because I used to be good at this. Um, <laughs> 05 was my best year. I married JJ. I won USPSA Nationals, Fort Benning. DPMS, Rocky Mountain Three Gun, as top lady, and all those. There weren't, uh, I didn't have a ton of competition. There were some really good ladies, um, but we were all not young, young like the crazy young people that are young girls and young women that are coming out and kicking everybody's butt now. Right. But um, it was a good year. And then 2006, both of us said, you know, we, I don't know if we're gonna do Rocky Mountain. My principal told me I could not miss the first day of school and Rocky Mountain was that week. And then we found out um, the guys had had a falling out and it was for a pretty good reason, rather not go into it, but the guy that was left running it had some issues and uh, found out he didn't have hardly any ROs. He didn't have stages designed. He didn't have much staff. And so JJ and I stepped up. Um, JJ was the range master. I just did the booklet and everything, but I drove from Thornton or Boulder down to Raton four times that week. Um, it was about a four hour drive. Wow. So that I could be there as much as I could. And then he did, he did not, the, the man running it did not behave well. It was neither of the Miller brothers or Jimmy Holdsworth. So I'll let you figure that out by yourself. <laughs> and the Whittington Center said, you know, he can't come back. And so JJ and I said, you know, you really need to let us have this match or it's going to die. It was the first natural train match in the United States, and there's nothing like it. It's just shooting a natural train is amazing. I mean, there's a bunch now, Blue Ridge, um, Gen 3, and uh, Fallen Brethren are all natural train. But um, Rocky Mountain was the first, and we just didn't want to let it die. So we became the match director and the match master, and we kind of took over completely in 07. And JP, John of JP Enterprises, he'd sponsored the last few SOFs and every Rocky Mountain up to that point. And even though it was kind of shaky in 2006, the match was pretty disorganized. And I was throwing together a prize table and I didn't know what I was doing. I was asking people, how much <laughs> is this worth? How much is this worth? It was, it was pretty sad. And, uh, but he had faith in us and um, said he'd sponsor the match at least one more year. And then things started taking off in 2007. And we've been full every year ever since. We've been over full lately. Um, in 14, we did a world shoot, which we, we may never do again. Um, but we had 15 stages. Um, the shooter shot three stages a day over five days. We invited people from all around the world. And we did have, I think it was 11 countries, including, uh, I think it was 12 Russians, Canada, England, Philippines, Mexico, Australia. I mean, it was at Finland. It was it was a hoot. Um, and we've just been running it ever since. And that's the short story of wow. how it came about. That you know, that's great. I I don't think I've ever heard that story. So uh, that's that's good. That you know, good to hear it. It's a uh, an interesting story nonetheless. And it's uh, it cracked me up when uh, JJ's like, oh, well, I'll take her. I was just thinking, yeah, you will. <laughs> 
I'm sure. Yeah, apparently, he kind of liked me, and it <laughs> it went. It was funny because after we got done doing the stage, he's not a morning person, and you know we were supposed to tear it down the day after the match, and um, he said we would go do some. I'd never done a lot of flying, uh, flying clay sports, and he was going to teach me how to do skeet. And I got up early because I couldn't sleep very well. And I went over there and I tore down all our stage by myself. And he shows up and he's like, well, are you going to do skeet? And I'm like, no, I'm too tired. I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> but then totally he's going to come plans. up to visit his son in South Denver. And I lived up in Thornton. So I said so that he wouldn't have to drive through rush hour traffic. He could come up and visit me <laughs> in North Denver. And don't ask. He's kind of silly. <laughs> and so we went on our first date and we closed the restaurant and we were talking. And then he then he took me out to the car and tried to show me his USPSA trophy, which he really had in the car. And he didn't even kiss me. So I didn't know what was going on. But, you know, we got it together after that. <laughs> that, that is fantastic. <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah, something like that. So, so when about did... Uh... You know, Rocky Mountain three gun turn from like a a once a year type thing to like a monthly match like you do now. Well, it, it's always Rocky Mountain three gun itself is always um it has always been just the the big one year match. Um, we call our quote local ones Johnson three gun. Okay. And now, except for us, there's only one local guy that comes, and we weren't even local until this year. Um. We call him Johnson Three Gun, and we don't do it every month. Um, we were we were going to try to do that, but we've had some weather issues. And coming from Denver, it's hard to get people to come to a local match. We still do natural terrain. We started just doing, um, I think it was '09. We moved down here from Aurora, and um, we were it was um, we had the friends that, you know James Casanova from the Three Gun Nation Iron Shooter. He and his brother Adam were helping us out a lot. They kind of started Three Gun in 2006, the really wonky year. And um, they would take their dually and drive all the steel down from Aurora and pick some up at Pueblo and bring it down here. And it just, it wears out your truck really bad. And so um, Aurora Gun Club is not real happy about running and shooting things anyway. Uh, they kind of scared away SAS, the cowboy shooters and they're not very nice to the IPSC and the USPSA shooters. So we were looking for another place to be. And the Whittington Center said, you know, you can have the shed down here and we'll let you put your own lock on it. And and so I think that was about 09. Um, as soon as we took over Rocky Mountain, we're not too bright. We started what we called our first Johnson three-gun match. We used to hold those at Pueblo. And they were just nine stages because JJ really likes choices. And I do too. But um Instead of natural terrain doesn't lend itself to a ton of choices. We try to give you choices, but um, when you have to travel a distance, it's hard to say, oh, you can shoot these targets with pistol or rifle unless you do a ton of paper or whatever. So um, uh, we did Johnson three gun and it was very choicey. We had, you, you had options on a lot of things and you had to do right and left and, and it went really well and we ran there for three years, but we never, I never had a prize table. We had prizes, but they were random draw or you got the bucket of prizes when you came in and we never filled up because no matter what they say, um, they really don't want to come unless there's a good prize table for the big matches. And it wasn't even that expensive, it was like hundred bucks. But, um, so we gave up on Johnson three gun and we were still running the Aurora matches for Rocky mountain three gun with the little ones there. And then, um, after we gave up on Johnson Three Gun, um, when Three Gun Nation came about and started doing all tactical um, divisions, it felt like they were trying to kind of push out the the He Man and stuff. And a lot of our sponsors make 308s, and we just we thought it was good to keep a little more diversity. So we started He Man Nationals, and I think this is the fourth year of He Man Nationals um, this coming year in '16. It's uh, May 14 and 15, I think, this year. And it's just laid back. It's still natural train stages, but it's only a Saturday and a Sunday where it's not a huge match. So you just shoot your stage and you move on. you got a couple hours to shoot and move on. And for some reason, it's just a lot more laid back than Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, we make fun because um, we have He-Man Scope and He-Man Iron for divisions. And then we have Wee Man which is okay. everything else, and we give you pink shirts, and we make fun of you, and the top wee man gets a tiara. And um, 
Yeah. And we call you wee man and we give you a teeny weeny little trophy and then the he men get the big trophy. And so I think just because we make fun of things, it just seems like a more laid back match and, and people have a good time. On Saturday afternoon, which is the first day, we go over to the high power silhouette range and all the he men. We shoot the piggies first to everybody pays their 20 bucks that wants to play. And they shoot five piggies. They get uh, 20 rounds, 15 seconds and five piggies. And we score how many everybody gets down. And then uh, we take the top eight and they go head to head, single elimination. They shoot pigs or something at about 400 meters. And then the turkeys at 100 yards with the shotgun slugs. And then pistols about 50 yards, those little chickens. And then there's a stop plate. And it's a hoot. And they run around and reset and make fun of each other. And, and it's a it's a blast. So. That sounds like a good time. So <laughs> Johnson's big and we're trying to make them more special. Like in March, we do our, our skills match where Saturday you do little short stages. Um, and then Sunday we put them together into a, more of a stage. You know, you, maybe you just shoot one, load eight, shoot one in your shotgun to kind of knock the cobwebs off because it's usually before superstition, which is the, the usually kind of the first match of the season. And uh, everybody can knock the cobwebs off. We put slugs out at 50 100 150 so you can kind of make sure you have a clue where you're hitting right um and, and so we do skills in march and then we we've been running an ro clinic this will be our fourth year for that as well for natural train ro's because it's totally different than working in berms you're you're a lot more independent you have to be because you can't even call somebody on the radio and uh so we do that clinic on saturday and then they kind of run everybody on sunday and then um JJ started a new match. He calls it his two rifle match, or we're trying to figure out what to call it, but precision tactical. We think we're going to have a big one in October, uh, end of August this year. We've got a sponsor that really wanted him to do something like this, so we're going to work this out at shot. But um, you shoot a AR-15 and a precision rifle, both on the same stage. Sometimes you're, they're all long-range targets, and sometimes you're doing a little running with your AR-15. Sometimes you have to carry your you know, your precision rifle and all your bags with you and stuff like that. So um, he's done um, four, I think four or five of them total. And we'll do a couple more um, in the summer and then hopefully do the big one in August, end of August. So we Wait. keep busy. Yeah. That's one of the reasons we moved down here. We moved down to Raton because driving four hours to set up was starting to kill me. <laughs> Yeah, I bet. Uh, it does sound like you guys are keeping busy. Now those... <laughs> yeah, and I'm retired, and it just means you're tired again. It's exhausting, <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, and, and I also do... Um, there's an organization called A Girl and a Gun, and I'm not real big on all girl groups or anything, but um, a friend of mine is a founder, Juliana Crowder, and she ROs for us for He-Man and, and Rocky Mountain, and her family comes out. And we did a three-gun university last year, and we're doing one more again that's all ladies, and it's kind of a training match. Um, they've got coaches and it's no big prizes or anything. It's not like the pro-am where we've got a bunch of, you know, pro shooters shooting too. We've got some really good shooters that are shooting with the ladies, but they're mostly coaching them and showing them how they deal with going to the restroom and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of tricky sometimes. <laughs> Got to figure out how to get the belt off and everything. <laughs> yeah. How to, how to get the belt on and how to organize it. So, cause you know, women, there are some things that are different about uh, women in shooting. I mean, in some ways we can be competitive with guys, but um, we don't have as much real estate. Even, even a skinny guy usually has more real estate than a skinny girl um, yeah, that's around for sure. their belt. And it, how do you put them? And our hips go out, which means everything digs into your hips. Most women come back with bruised hips for the first year that they're shooting, sometimes even longer than that. Um, you end up with bruises on your hips when you're shooting regularly. So, you know, it's it's kind of nice to have women. And we have uh, guy ROs that come out and RO like Mark and, and James Casanova. And they come out and they give them really great tips and how to break down stages and stuff too. So. So those, it, keeps uh, us busy. it sounds like you're super busy. Now I can see why you don't do like an ex a regular monthly match. You just do a few throughout the year. Now, yeah. Have you set like the, uh, the dates for those yet? Yeah. Um, if you Google Johnson three gun, I think you'll be able to find it. I, I, my regular website was an earthlink website cause we're into free 
And it just does not, they're not supporting it very well and it's not working very well. So I went to webs. So, um, if you, I think it's johnson3gun.webs.com gives you the local matches and John, um, he-man3gun.webs.com gives you the He-Man match. And then I have a Rocky Mountain World match on webs also, which is arm3gunworlds, I think, um, .webs.com. But you can, you know, search around and you can find them. The dates are um, up for, I think, all of them. Okay, good. Uh, and I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put links to those in the uh, show notes that, there for people who are trying to check them out. You can check it out at 3gunshow.com and we'll have easy links for you right there. So the uh, the other thing you mentioned was uh, the the Wee Man when when uh, <laughs> which sounds like a lot of fun. Now Wee Man, I'm assuming that's uh, someone shooting like two two three in yep. in a uh, He Man match. Anything that's not He Man, which for for our matches we don't do heavy metal. Our He Man is a three oh eight forty five. 308 or larger, but no 50s. Um, a 45, and then you can use 44 Magnum if you're really brave and have a lot of moon clips for your revolver, and then a 12 gauge pump. And so some people just don't enjoy pumps. And um, staff, you know, you need staff to run the match, but they don't all shoot He Man. So um, I don't shoot He Man. Um, I shoot the heavy tactical in some matches. Um, Though I don't think it's, it can't be called He-Man because it's really not. All you have to do is shoot a 308 and half of them let you shoot a 9 millimeter, which doesn't seem very heavy to me at all. But <laughs> I can shoot it and then I get to go to the prize table sooner. Don't get a better prize, but I get to get out of there sooner at the end. Don't have to wait. I have to wait a long time on the tax scope table. But uh, we wanted to let some people like a lot of He-Men have wives or children that don't can't really can't pull off He-Man. It's a lot of work. And, uh, and they can't hold up the guns or whatever in the case of small kids or young kids. So we made the Wee Man class for everybody else. And it's basically the rules for open. Pretty much anything goes. Um, and they just, and then you come out and you shoot the same state. Sometimes it's a little harder because you're shooting a little Wee 2-3. Two, two, and, and we don't really care if they swing the targets as well because we don't really care about the Wee Man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nice having um, the extra people come out. And we get to make fun of them. We... Uh, the first the first two years, Jared Milanazzo, who's a very an excellent shooter, he won Wee Man. He is going to college and he didn't want to get the gear. And then uh, I told him he couldn't shoot in the shoot off unless he shot He Man in the match. So last uh, two years ago, he came back as a He Man and he won He Man scope last year and then this year. Oh no, yeah. And uh, so, but the first two years he won Wee Man and his friends would bring his tiara to Rocky Mountain Three Gun. So that may be another reason why he decided not to shoot Wee Man anymore. That's awesome. You you shamed him into shooting He Man. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's what we did. <laughs> so the uh... I kind of like it. Um, we have um, two years ago we had our first lady He Man, and this year I think we had three or four or five uh, He Man scopes at He Man Nationals, which was really cool. Um. It takes a lot. I'm not, I, I am too old to figure out how to run that pump. Well, I can run it fine, but I can't run it like in competition because I have to take it down in between shots. So, but there are some women that very small, small, thin, really cute women that can run the heck out of those guns. So it's kind of cool. Oh, that's great. And it's, it's uh, cool to see it being opened up to uh to a wider audience as well. <laughs> so, so the, uh, the 2016 Rocky Mountain Three Gun match um, is now. Do I have these dates right? Is it August 13th through the 16th? 11. Uh, it's 11, 13 through 16 was last year. Oh, I'm um, sorry, I have the wrong year, dates. Pardon me, this year. Uh, two, um, in in 16, it's 11 through 14. August 11 through 14. Okay, August 11 through 14. And after we did the world shoot, we found out that people feel a lot better not shooting four stages a day. It doesn't sound like four stages doesn't sound like a lot. Um, a lot of times you're shooting nine stages in a day, but um, between stage one and stage nine, it's like it can be over 11 miles. So there's a lot of tra traveling time and our average length of ground covered is about 100 yards. So three stages a day is about about comfy. So we we're doing three stages a day for our shooters every other squad and then sunday we do 
uh, junior shoot off and a lady shoot off and the team shoot. We started the team shoot for, um, we did a kind of a team shoot for the world shoot and people really wanted more team stuff. So last year we did a team competition where every team shot a 10th stage. Um, we snuck them away um, in between when they were shooting regularly and it was a blind stage. The RO picked them up, took them back. Only the four people on the team could go. He walked them through the stage, gave them five minutes and they shot it and then they left. And then the top four oh, cool. teams, uh, the top four teams that finished the best on that stage. Plus we added in the scores because every team member has to shoot a different division. Um, so we added in the scores, their percentages in their divisions, and then the top four teams did a team-on-team shoot-off at the course center where you have to count to six, which is tricky. <laughs> <laughs> count you to can six. only shoot six rounds. And we had, we had some issues. We had some issues this year. People were shooting seven rounds, and that made things bad, and it was, it was really funny. Um, but then they go head to head. And so everybody gets to, everybody who's a team gets to shoot at least the stage. And, uh, and so we do that on Sunday and then we do prize table and then we try to get out of there by two or so. So everybody can head home. Yeah. The, uh, the match is, is something else. I was down there actually just to uh, do interviews this year in 2015. And I was, first I was taken aback by the Whittington center, how absolutely incredible it is. Uh, and then getting to see like a lot of the shooters shoot the natural terrain stages, the Coor Center was ridiculous. Uh, there's just the whole place is just indescribable. I mean, you have to see it to believe it. It's just an amazing range. It is, and there's even the other natural terrain stages. I mean, matches. None of them um, have to call stop shooting because the black bear is looking at the people next to the rifle target. Like, why can't you hit this? <laughs> <laughs> we've had deer, we've had, um, snakes. Um, a couple years ago, one of the, I think it was one of the arm, uh, Marines, they were at getting ready to do the shotgun stage. Thank goodness. And they're like, sir, do you know there's a rattlesnake at our feet, sir? <laughs> and the was like, ah, you goes, sir, what should I do? And he's like, shoot it. So he shoots it. And then the RO has him load up that run round and get ready and shoot the stage. Um, we've got everything. <laughs> One year they were, uh, before we ran it, um, when it was still, we were RO and they were standing around in a pistol stage. Everybody had an empty pistol in their holster getting the walk through. And this deer comes flying through this gully like 900 miles an hour. And they're all like, what the heck? And then the cougar came running back right after him. He was chasing the deer. Oh my and the cougar God. probably passed, I don't know, 20, 25 yards away from all the shooters. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's cool. I mean, luckily, knock on wood, we've never had any issues because there's only one dose of snake anti venom in the Raton hospital. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't ask. But, um, we, right. we've been real lucky, but it's, it's just amazing. We've had a lady had to get four reshoots because the deer, she, they'd let everybody else finish. They wouldn't let her. Every time she got up halfway through the stage, these does would walk out and the little Marine would run down there and chase them away. And then they'd run a couple more shooters and she'd get ready and she'd get up. But luckily she'd get a little less far and they were like, you got to stop again. They're back. They're back. She says, I'm shooting through them next time. I'm not stopping again. <laughs> but it's, and it's beautiful, but it also adds, it makes it tough because, you know, we can get rain and wind and, you know, you try to like set up shotgun stages so that they're going um, mostly to the north. So you never have the sun in your eyes, but you can't always do that. Um, and some people have to shoot something in the rain with mud and some people don't. So it makes things a little more exciting that way, too. Plus, another thing unique to that match is uh, the elevation. Whereas, you know, <laughs> we're kind of used to it because we're from Colorado. But uh, but for other folks, it, it pl plays havoc on them. I'm trying real hard to get an oxygen sponsor and have, a, you know, have cans of oxygen. I got close last year, but I didn't make it and I'm working on it again this year. So we'll see. But, uh, it is, it's different that Flatlanders, um, you know, everybody knows who Katie Harris is. She's with the AMU now. Mm -hmm. Um, she shot He-Man at Blue Ridge, which is the same rules as ours. Um, the 308, 45 and a pump 12 gauge. And she came in like third when she was 17 or something. I mean, she's just an incredible shooter. And I said, well, come out and shoot He-Man. 
she goes, no, no, it's too hard. <laughs> and, 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 and Blue Ridge is a very physically challenging match. Um, Andy believes that you should be physically fit and be able to climb over water towers and whatever when you're shooting. But it's the oxygen here that made, because she's from Georgia, that it, it makes it harder for the Flatlanders. It's, it's, you really don't have much air and you, it's harder to run, you know, your hundred yards and then do your rifle when you can't even catch your breath. So it does make it a little more challenging for the Flatlanders. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Well, so with, uh, with all the wildlife and the uh, lack of oxygen, I think you pretty much sold the match. So if, uh, <laughs> If uh, folks are listening and they want to uh, sign up for the match, registration opens December 13th, which uh, just happens to be the same day that this podcast will come out. And uh, how, how do they go about doing that? Well, um, go to the website. We have rm3g.com and then the, the rm3gunworld.webs.com. Both of those um, websites will have the applications. Um, there are two applications. Well, there's a total of three, but there's two. There's a new shooters and a returning shooters. If you've shot with um, JJ and I basically since 2007, because that's what we have records for, if you shot two Rocky Mountain three guns from then to now, you can just do the returning shooter application, and we put it in the mail. There's no computer thing going on, and uh, I usually get you in um, right away. If you're new or only shot once with us, then you shoot the new, um, you fill out the new shooter's application, and I would send it in the same day. I would send it in as soon as you can, because I write down the postmark mark and the receive date. And then on January 9th, I give my returning shooters a little time for our regulars to get in. And then on January 9th, I let as many people of the new shooter's wait list as I can in. It's been pretty tight. Um, uh, lately, uh, last year, um, I overbooked a bit, but I got 30 or 40 of the new shooters in that had never shot with us before. Um, it's just, it's, it's been real popular. Um, I think it's because of the lack of oxygen. I think people like that feeling maybe. <laughs> um, but every, everybody should send them in as soon as they can and just put them in the real mail. Don't do signature required or anything and don't waste your money on express mail. Just put them in the real mail and uh, I'll get your confirmation out to you as soon as I can. I try to get it out the same day or it comes in the mail for me. Uh, it takes a while, um, but uh, we try to keep up and so people know what's going on and communicate real well. And so how, you know many, uh, can do. how many shooters total do you guys run through the uh, match? Um. During the match itself, if we have um, we have 18 squads and 12 shooters each is 216. We were just a touch over that last year because um, I tried to be an airline and I overbooked a little because I hate saying no. <laughs> I just I, if people want to come shoot, I really want to try to get you in. So we were a little full last year, but we also have we had a staff of 65 last year, so it was almost 300 shooters. Um, it's a lot of people. And, it's it's a lot of people and it and it's just the the nature of it makes it. People say, well, why can't you let a few more in? Well, it we're looking at we try to have our ROs do a six minute turnaround time from first shot to first shot of each shooter. But when you're going a hundred yards and you got to get your you got to make sure your slung rifle's clear and your pistol's clear and you know, sometimes we stage things and get down range and reset. We try to keep reset as low as we can. It's it's difficult to find people. Everybody's like, we'll get 4-H, but they're never able to come out and the Boy Scouts. So we try. We we had some resetters last year for two of the more intense stages. Um, some boys came out for work for donations for the young Marines and um, some some kids that are our children of people that work at the NRA Whittington Center. And uh, so we did get a little bit of reset, but it takes a long time to turn around stages. So adding a few people can really back you up and you have to leave a little room for the rain because August is monsoon season. So we usually get a little rain every day and it can slow you down because we don't want, you know, we don't want you shooting in lightning and getting struck by lightning when you're running around with lightning rod. Yeah, nobody wants <laughs> that. Hand. So um, we do have to keep it relatively tight um can't just let everybody in though i would like to yeah yeah you 
I mean, you definitely have to have certain limits, but Denise, it sounds like you guys are uh, doing some awesome things down there and, uh, you know, ex- exciting matches that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be interested in, uh, new people wise. So I'm sure those new slots are going to fill up quick. So if, uh, if you're, if you're listening to this, you're interested in the match, hurry up <laughs> and, uh, get over to rm3g.com and, uh, and send your, uh, application off. So Denise, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you for telling me about the, uh, you know, the origin of the, of your matches and everything. And thanks for being on the three gun show. Thank you. It was fun. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Denise Johnson of Rocky Mountain 3 Gun. The NRA Whittington Center is an amazing spot for a range. It is really sort of indescribable. I was I was really taken aback the first time I was there. Shooting a match there is one of those epic things that you don't want to miss out on, which is why I'm signing up for the match this year as well. I'll be on the newbie list, so hopefully I'll get in. And again, links to everything we discuss can be found in the show notes threegunshow.com slash episode 49 including links to uh, registration there quick reminder if you want to support the show and get yourself something awesome at the same time buy a born to three gun t-shirt at threegunshow.com slash merch m-e-r-c-h buy during pre-sale and get an art print of the design signed and numbered by the artist thank you so much for downloading listening and subscribing to the show i'll catch you in the next episode Unload show clear.